I'm the executive director of Alliance for Bear District 6. Uh, our secretary is not going to be able to make it today. Uh, she works. And our uh, other board members are on their way. Um, and this is called the stakeholder meeting because, uh, and we've been operating since uh, 1999, this organization. And basically, most of the people who are in this room are here because of the fact that um, you're required to do community outreach relating to your permits that you're trying to seek. And, or have sought, and uh, this is why you're here, is to discuss them um, and uh, uh, give some sunshine to uh, what your process is. So uh, e uh, even though you may not see a lot of people here, it's going to be up on YouTube, and so uh, it, it does resonate to uh, other people will be, uh, seeing what you say and, uh, or not say. Uh, okay, um, and everybody should sign in. Um, and uh, if you have business cards, put them in the uh, business card bucket up there. Um, and uh, I will be going around talking to people individually as the meeting is progressing. Um, uh, because I think a lot of times people don't want to say stuff on camera, but the thing is that uh, there's stuff that needs to be said uh, while you do your presentation, and that's what the purpose of your meeting, uh, why you're being asked to come to the meeting, is to uh, discuss uh, why you're here. All right, thank you. So Marvis Phillips will be chairing the meeting today. And I'll finish introducing myself. I'm also currently chairing land use chair, public safety chair, legislative analyst. I live on the 12th floor of this building, and I'm a 37 year resident of the Tenway on Eddy Street. We have simple ground rules for on the back of the agenda. Um, since we are videotaping the meeting, we have people to turn off pagers, cell phones, tablets, anything that goes deep in your pocket, please. Um, if, you want, if you don't want to be on the camera, we ask that you stay behind the camera so that people won't videotape you. Uh, we also want to create a safe environment um, for people who feel free to talk about issues within the, within, within the, uh, that's on the agenda. We also ask that you don't uh, back talk, do any name calling or anything derogatory. We ask you to speak responsibly and emphasize on the positive. We also ask you not to interrupt people speaking or engage in side conversations that could really disrupt the program. And since this is not a political meeting, we won't talk about that. Um, is there any additions to the agenda? Seeing none. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I so move. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Membership committee. The, Al the Alliance for Better District 6 is a membership organization. We, all, we run our meeting on donations, people paying dues, and we ask people to contribute. Susan, want to pass out the hand? We also ask people to help business cards if they have it please. Give what you can, don't give it if you don't, if you don't have it, just give what you can. 
this helps pay for all the paperwork you see in front of you? Well, yeah, I mean, it pays for uh, other it pays for running the organization. So it doesn't help cover the cost. Just stand right there. Yeah, right, right around there. Not so much over there, but right there. You're fine, you know, because. Um... Good evening, everybody. Um, Adam McMicken, I'm with Trader Joe's. Uh, I'm also a San Francisco native. I've been with Trader Joe's for about 22 years. Uh, my title is regional vice president. Uh, we are opening a new location that we're very excited about on Fourth and Market. Uh, it is the downstairs of. Old Navy, what used to be the downstairs of Old Navy. Uh, this is Manny Bobel. How you doing? Manny Bobel, I've been Trader Joe's for about 32 years. Um, I'm going to be the manager of that particular store. They call me a captain. Um, been over there. We've been hiring people rapidly. Um, we've already about 60 people to work. We're currently going to look for quite a few more right from the immediate neighborhood. And everyone seems really excited about us being there. Um, we've had an overwhelming amount of support. Uh, the reason we're here this evening is Marvis and Michael have filed a protest against our liquor license. Uh, we reached out to them and were invited to this meeting. And so I thought I'd uh, take this opportunity to uh, answer any of their questions specifically uh, or any of your questions uh, or address any of your concerns as well. Marvis, I'll start with you. Do you have any, any questions or concerns um, that you'd like to... That'd be longest for you to do a presentation. Because uh, it's Um, yeah, we're, we're a grocery store. Uh, we sell uh, kind of uh, we sell unique products, uh, lots of new stuff. Um, we've got currently five locations in San Francisco. Um, all of them are uh, are well received by the community. Uh, we participate in the community. Uh, we offer donations and, and work with lots of different community groups. Um, and, and we're a positive presence. We want to be a part of, of the solution. We want to be a part of making uh, the neighborhoods that we're in great, uh, clean, safe environments. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's what we've got going on. Any of that? Um, pretty much just what you said. Adam. For the most part, you know, most communities love to have us, um, you know, and we try to do our best to be part of the community and make the community better at that. So. Any questions? Yeah, uh, okay, I've not uh, I noticed you've been around for a while, and uh, I understand that you were uh, uh, that uh, the people that may have all these uh, also own, own part of tra tra Trader Joe's. It, it was a sort of a German concern. A, a German concern? A German grocery. It was, it was started in Germany, wasn't it? Or started, you know. Uh, okay, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The Trader Joe's was started in the United States. United States, okay. But the original owners of it were had Aldi's and some other pla uh, other stores. Uh, it, you're speaking of the Albrecht family. Yeah. Uh, which still owns us to this day. Yeah, okay. That's okay. They're very good. Uh, and, uh, you know, like. Uh, in Indiana, I, I I went with my daughter to Aldi's, and it was a great discount store. So, discount groceries are, are really great, and uh, I like the fact that you have unique items. Uh, and um, so, uh, I'm an enthusiastic uh, shopper there. So, uh, 
I mean, but uh, you can talk about your philosophy of, 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 you know, corporate philosophy of, you know, how you, um, how you get along with the communities, what you do for them, things like that. Well, I offer, I mean, first of all, you talk about value. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know we definitely offer a value. Um, you know, we're not, uh, we're not whole paycheck. Um, we're, we're, it, it's important to us that people can come to, to our location. Uh, to our stores and have fun, mm -hmm. uh, find some new things, find things that, that are at great prices, that are at great value. Mm -hmm. um, and within the community, as I said, it's important that we are a part, a successful part of, of the community mm -hmm. uh, and as a whole. Uh, you know, the products that um, we can't sell, we, we work with different organizations to, um, to get those out into the community mm -hmm. uh, that are privileged. Um, we donate to schools, uh, we donate to, to churches, we donate to all sorts of different organizations to make sure that they can do what they need to do uh, to help the community. Mm -hmm. Do you also have these shirts? Actually, I haven't seen these shirts like that and I like the person that I find. Um, do you all you at what point do you store in this community? We are, yes. We're opening a store on 4th and Market. I gave you the agenda. This is the first item. I'm sorry? That's on the agenda, the first item. Well, I'm sorry. I just got any check to read it yet. Um, we've hired people from the community to work in your stores? We are. We've already hired uh, 60 people from the community, and we're looking to hire 50 or 60 more. Is, it, is there, is there, is there, is there a, a true diversity in your hiring? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Oh, everybody can ask questions. Oh, I, I do. I actually have a question. I know that um, I don't live in this area, so I'm just going to qualify that. I'm a visitor. Thank you for having me. But at our Trader Joe's in my neighborhood, they drop off a lot of the kind of not the stuff that's a day old, not saleable to the senior centers. Mm -hmm. And other places do have those plans. Maybe you can cover that. But yes, we do have those plans. Okay. Absolutely. And, yeah, all and of you our let everybody know that. here because I mean I know that that's invaluable where we I, are. I've been uh, running source of the city. Eleven and a half years. Um, kind of, uh, I had Gary Masonic, and I was the last six years and five years before that on Ninth and Bryant, and we donate uh, over a million dollars a year yeah. from those particular stores to the community. In, and in, it's real stuff, food. It's good food, real stuff. Yeah, yeah. salads. Meat. It's not spoiled food. It's yeah, not exactly. sellable foods, basically. Anything with cranberries and all of, and our almonds. It's it's great. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Okay, I just want to make sure that we're going to make Oh, okay. Um, we definitely right. give back to I want to make it clear that they're here because of a Type 21 liquor license. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, even though we want to hear their plan, business plan. And uh, I think the problem... Susan, I'm talking. Camera. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think the problem is that you may not be aware of that other uh, large chain businesses have tried to open up uh, their uh, stores nearby your uh, location and have failed miserably getting their liquor license. And I give you examples. Um, Bristol Farms never got a liquor license for Type 21. And, uh, Trader, and uh, uh, the, at the Metreon, the, uh, um, what's the name? Target uh, wanted a 21 and ended up with a 20. And so the problem, the problem is that we have an old saturation of liquor licenses in the district. It it's kind of goes to, it's, see, there's there's the PR stuff that you want to say that you've done, and you, you do a great job. It's not, that's not the issue. The issue is when you're deciding to, one of your products being alcohol coming into the community, we do not know, and you haven't talked about it, and this is what one of the things I want to know, is are you going to have an entrance out, out of the BART station into your store? No, no, we will not. Well, see, but I wouldn't know that. Because all I see is a posting on your window saying you're um, opening up a store, and it's down there in the basement. And and if people were to walk through the uh, BART station, you see uh, a lot of problems there. And how would you monitor that? And when other businesses have opened to uh, try to have liquor licenses, one of the biggest problems is um, above you um, is uh, theft. So how do you plan on what's your security plan? See, I mean, there are real issues here. Not 
the mm -hmm. PR stuff. There is the real issues, uh, and that's what I want to hear is the real issues and not the PR stuff. So, do you have a security plan? Uh, are you, you know, how are you going to uh, prevent? Uh, because if you were to sell alcohol, I give an example. Walgreens ends up putting uh, anti-theft devices on their uh, bottles so that uh, they have to be taken off before uh, they are, uh, go out the door. It's not just stolen uh, off the shelves and then out, you know, go out the door without uh, being paid for. Let me answer a couple of them. Yeah. I know. Right we up won't have. Them, so yeah, okay. We yeah. won't have uh, an entrance to BART. And number two is we will have a uniform security presence there from the time that we open until the time that we close. Uh, that uniform security presence will not only monitor downstairs in the sales floor area, but upstairs in the lobby as well as the uh, area in front of our store as well. Uh, when it comes to theft, we have crew members uh, on the sales floor in the alcohol section from the time that we open until the time that we close monitoring all those things. You know, more importantly, the, the priority is to take care of our customers and help them make informed buying decisions. But, their presence from the time that we open until the time that we no, close. How are you going to stop? Uh, are you going to put caps on your anti theft caps on your bottle if you were to get an alcohol license on your bottles of wine? No. Okay. Well, see, that's where we have a. It's not something that we do. Neither. But yeah. we're talking about this neighborhood, we're not talking about all your other stores. Yeah. yeah. See, so it, it's, it's a question of uh, you know, walking t in uh, to the other surrounding stores that sell alcohol. Uh, and I'm referring to now the one on Powell Street, they do uh, Walgreens. And, uh, you know, th th this is based on, again, community saying if you want your liquor license, you have to understand where you're walking into and the problems, uh, and, and not to exasperate the problems of the community. And uh, you're basically on the edge of the Tenderloin, and you're also on the edge of the uh, uh, South Market. You're not in the financial district. Your PR says financial district. You're not the financial district. You know, no matter what you say, and you say you got lots of community support. I've read your community support, but they are thinking in terms of you know uh, coming in and buying. Uh, you know, and that's all great. They're seeing, they're they're comparing what you already done with other stores, but uh, they're not taking into account for the problems um, this organization has dealt with for many years uh, that still exist and uh, and so on. So uh, and and we we just. You know, we want every everything to run smoothly for your store, not to be you know to deal with it ahead of time, not after the fact, um, and then uh, you run across another set of problems. Well, to give the kids, I think you've asked some of the said that usually we're better the community. Well, one way to better the community is to safeguard any incidents or circumstances that might arise that would put at risk or jeopardize your position as a retail store. Yeah, we, we operate on California and High, um, you know, Trader Joe's, so we've been open for five years now, currently. Four years. Okay. And, I mean, that it's is... It's totally different neighborhood. Okay. It's That's a different neighborhood. It's a high, it's a more, uh, you know, it's different. And, uh, again, if you want to make the comparison, when uh, CVS, one of their second, one of the liquor licenses where uh, Cala is, um, which is just further down a little bit, uh, the neighborhood requested that there be they, the, the store buy two alcohol licenses. Well, we're in the same building as them. No, no, I'm talking about uh, Trader Joe. Uh, um, yeah, see. Well, anyway. We're in that Cala building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the same problems exist, and we've been dealing with them there. And yeah, but it is sort of a successful. different neighborhood because okay. it's a different, well, it's there, a, there, it's, cause there's the, the, the income is higher over there compared to the income of the people down in this part of the city. It's also, if you've done your marketing, you know that you're, you're, it, 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 there's a lot of differences. It's not always the same. And, uh, and you're, you're going to come across other additional problems. And, and it's just a matter of how you mitigate all that. And that's, that's the reason why you're here, is how, how are you mitigating with the community? You basically, all you did was post a sign. You didn't do any community outreach before you posted the sign. He, all he did was go after, uh, which is fine, you need to get employees at some point, but the reality is anybody going after a liquor license has to eventually, is it going to be benefiting the community? And that's what a PCN hearing is about, and and that's why you're here, is uh, how are you going to benefit the community with your liquor license? You're not here to talk about, you could talk about all the other things as a Trader Joe's, which is all great, but we're not concerned about 
we know you do a great job, or I think most of us know you do a great job uh, with your food and all that, but we are only concerned about um, one item, which is your off-sale liquor license. That's it. And so, just to